Good evening. It's six o'clock. I'd like to call the King George County School Board organizational meeting to order. On the agenda following the call to order, I'd like to begin with the invocation by Mr. Anton Uji. If you could please come forward. Hope I said that right. I'm sorry. If we could please stand. Okay, if uh, everybody will pray with me. Lord, uh, I just prayed for uh, the school board, this board that's uh, starting out, the new board that's starting out now. Um, Lord, I pray for your guidance for every member of the board. I pray that uh, you will guide them to make good decisions for our schools and for our county. Lord, I pray that um, they not only be good decisions, but that they will be godly decisions, decisions that are in accord with your word and with your will. I pray that you would give them wisdom as they discuss the issues at hand and that you would lead them to make wise decisions. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. If you would remain st standing, we will now do the Pledge of Allegiance and moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please pause for a moment of silence. Thank you. Please have a seat. The next item on the agenda is the election of the chairperson of the King George County School Board. Do we have a nomination for the chairperson? I nominate Mr. David Bush for chair. I have a nomination for Mr. David Bush. Do I have a second? I second. I, I think I have to accept first. Oh, the okay. <laughs> I accept the nomination. Okay. I second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of Mr. David Bush as the chairman of the school board for King George County, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, Mr. David Bush is chairperson of the King George County School Board. I'll hand over the gavel to you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Boyd. Next on the agenda with this organizational meeting will be the election of the vice chair. Do I have any nominations? I nominate Matt Bowles. Bowles, do you accept that nomination? I do. Do I have a second? I will second. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? All right. Um, we'll do this since there's only one. We'll do this as a verbal vote, just like Dr. Boyd did. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Rolls. Thank you, a doctor. Uh, you are the vice chair. All right. And next um, comes the appointment of the VSBA delegate and alternate. Um, do I have any volunteers? <laughs> the VSBA? Yes, for the VSBA delegate. Me. Colleen? Okay. Thank you. Um, we have Ms. Davis has uh, um, agreed to do the uh, be the delegate. Do I have an agreement for an alternate? We'll vote on this in a moment. I will be an alternate. Thank you, Ms. Hoover. All right. All those will do with, first of all, Ms. Uh, Davis to be the, uh, the VSBA delegate. We need to vote on all these. So um, all those, oh, I'm sorry, was it seconded? Do I have a second to? I'll second. All right. Um, all those in favor of Ms. Colleen Davis being the VSBA delegate, please signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. You are the delegate. Um, and then Thank also, um, I'm assuming the second for the, the alternate. We'll use Mr. Frank again as the second for both of those. And um, so do I have, um, um, excuse me, all those in favor of Ms. Cole, of Ms. Kathy Hoover being the alternate, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. You are the alternate. Congratulations, Ms. Hoover. 
All right, next is the appointment to the governor's school. And there's, even though there's only two of them listed, in reality, there are three of them. But if you would, you can um, turn to the, uh, I think there was a separate piece of paper that Dr. Boyd gave us. Yes, it should be at the back of your organizational packet. It's titled Committee Descriptions. There you go. It's a single page in the back of your organizational, uh, right behind your organizational meeting agenda. And it also gives the VSBA delegate responsibility. So, Ms. Davis, you probably have already seen some of that. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the governor's school, each, uh, I'll read through this, each That's school division must appoint a board member and an alternate to sit as a member of the governor's school board. And there are three of them. And we'll take these one at a time. First is the Chesapeake Governor's School Board, consisting of 13 members and meets five to six times per year in the evening, either at Tappahannock or Bowling Green. It hires the director and teaching staff, approves the annual budget, and sets policy and procedures. The second one is the Commonwealth Governor's School Board, consists of three members and meets four to five times per year at 3 p.m. in the Spotsylvania Central Office, and it hires the director, uh, approves the annual budget, and sets policy and procedures. Then we have the ATI, slightly different, but it's still very similar to the Governor's School, and it's the Academy of Technology and Innovation. If you want to write that down, ATI, Academy of Technology and Innovation. When it first started, it was referred to as the Lab School. And this one meets at the uh, University of Mary Washington campus in Stafford, and it does very similar things. Right now it has uh, how many members, Dr. Boyd, are on the... Uh, is it just I think it's one from each school division, I know, so it's it five. five. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. So it's five members, um, and it has a. Um, it does the same type of thing. It hires the director and approves the annual budget and sets policies and procedures. And especially with this one, it's a brand new school, which will be starting in August. And right now, they're even entertaining and receiving applicants for those that will be attending that school, even from King George. All right, let's go through these one at a time. And who wants to volunteer for these? Um, first, we'll take the uh, uh, Chesapeake Governor School Board. Do I have a volunteer that would like to accept that position? I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Because I'm, I'm aware that Matt wants one of those governor schools. I'll take the other one. That is that, is that the <laughs> Chesapeake one? All right, I would like the Commonwealth Governor School, and we'll also need an alternate for that, by the way. So, so you will take the Commonwealth Governor School? Right. But be an alternate for that one? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm I'm good with Mrs. Davis taking Chesapeake Bay Governor School. Okay, I see. But I'm saying for the the CGS, which I'd like to continue with, we'll also need to elect an alternate right, for that. Correct, correct. Well, we'll go with the uh, major one. Let's deal with Chesapeake first. So, are you willing to be the Chesapeake Governor School? Yes. Representative. Okay. Um, and um, we have a we have a volunteer. I don't know if we need to have a second and vote on. Yeah, I guess we do. All right. Um. We're nominating um, Ms. Um, Ms. Davis to be the Chesapeake Governor's School representative. Do I have a second for that? Or Mr. Roll seconds that. Um, all those in favor signify by saying yes. Aye. Aye. Yes or aye. The, the chair votes aye. Motion passes. You are the representative. Um, now we need an alternate for the Chesapeake Governor's School. And that doesn't mean you need to attend every meeting. It just means that if Ms. Davis can't be there, that you would, uh, you would take her place. I'm not sure if we've had an alternate in the past for that, Mr. Yeah. Bush, but uh, I know I they know really require it. They asked for it for CGS, so that's all I was asking They have for. asked for CGS? Mm -hmm. Dr. Boyd, I guess um, your advice on this one, um, has Chesapeake ever had an alternate? I see it here, but have we ever had one? I don't think we have had one. I, I think it was Ms. Hawk for Chesapeake Bay Governor's right. School, and th that was the only um, representative we have. We didn't have an alternate in the all past. Right. Yeah. So let's not choose necessarily an alternate. However, if you can't attend, just let us know. Sure, or let them know, obviously. All right, um, so we'll just have a, one representative and not an alter for, alternate for the Chesapeake Governor's School because that's been our practice. Um, and let us know if that's a problem, Ms. Davis. Um, all right, um, Dr. Uh, Mr. Rolls, I can keep making you doctor. Um, we have a uh, person who is willing to accept the position of representing the uh, Commonwealth Governor's School Board. Um, and uh, we have, do we have a second for that? I second. Thank you, Ms. Hoover. And all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Mr. Rolls, you are the representative for the Commonwealth Governor's School. Now, they specifically, as Mr. Rolls said, has asked for an alternate. I will this be time. the alternate. You're willing to be the yes. alternate? Anybody else? Thank you, Ms. Hoover. Do I have a second for Ms. Hoover being the alternate? I second. 
All right, all those in favor of Ms. Hoover being an alternate, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. Chair votes aye. Ms. Hoover, you are the alternate. All right, ATI. Um, up to this point, I have been the representative for ATI, and I don't believe there's a requirement for an alternate at this point. There might be in the future, but there's not now. So I'm willing to accept the position to continue as the ATI representative. Um, do we have a, a second? I'll second. All, right, all those in favor of Mr. Bush being the representative for the Academy of Technology and Innovation, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. I'm the representative. All right. Let's go to, I know this is monotonous, but we do need to do this, so please bear with us. All right, the committees. Uh, we have the Technology Advisory, the CTE, the Gifted and Talented, Special Education, Health and Safety, and Title I. So I think all of us have looked at these. I know that um, uh, the new board members have had a chance to uh, uh, look at all of these, and I hopefully we all have some at least ideas of things we might volunteer for. So let's start the first one. And I don't know, uh, Dr. Boyd, if we need to vote, I can see the governor's schools, but do we just need, simply need to identify people? We don't need to vote on all I these. think we just need to identify right. people, if I remember correctly. So we just need people to volunteer. Technology advisory, do I have someone that would like to take that committee? I will take that committee. Hoover? Okay, Ms. Hoover, you're there. <laughs> What about the CTE, Career and Technology? Mr. Chairman, I'll take that. Thank you, Mr. Frank. Anybody else? You are the representative, Mr. Frank. Thank you. Gifted and Talented. Mr. Chair, I would like that one as well, please. Okay. All right, Ms. Hoover, you are the rep. Special Education. I had that last year. I don't mind taking it again unless somebody else wants it. All right, I'll take special ed again. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. It's not that I wouldn't want it. I just don't know what it would entail. Like, what would it require? Oh, for the special ed? Yes. It's just, it's attending the advisory meetings, which are usually at least two, sometimes three a year. And during those meetings, we discuss the uh, what's going on in special ed, any new innovations, any new things like, uh, I'll just, I won't go too much into depth, but last year um, they instituted this process of having materials that parents could come in for their children. And we have made like a resource a center for parents um, that have needs or have children that could have special needs. And it's really been a good program. And so um, the director of that gets grants and do, so it's, uh, and discusses the needs um, of special ed. And we bring those back to the board many times. Okay, if you're good with it, it's fine. I just want to. Well, you, you can be an alternate for sure. Okay, I'll do an alternate. You can also join. Two people can be on these committees. Okay. You want to be on it sure. with me? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Bush and Ms. Hoover. Oh, not Ms. Hoover, I'm sorry, Ms. Davis. But... All right, health and safety. Mr. Chairman, I'll take that one. Got it. Thank you, Mr. Frank. All right, Title I. What is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a little bit of an explanation. I'll let Dr. Boyd give that one. Dr. Boyd, can you give a brief explanation of Title I? So this is an annual committee that we have. Title I is a government-funded program, so it talks about basically how we expend those, uh, on, on the elementary level, how we use those funds, and they meet, I think they meet annually. It's not too much of a demand. Okay, I'll take that. It, it is, a, let me, I don't want to diminish what um, Dr. Boyd just said, but it really is a huge responsibility as far as the whole division is concerned because it provides a lot of government uh, support for things. All right, thank you, Mr. Frank. All right, let's move on. Um, okay, the calendar, if you would. Uh, Board members, if you would take a look at the calendar, it's on the back page. Um, I will say that there's been a very brief discussion about some of uh, these um, dates possibly being work sessions. And there is no problem. These dates are more, uh, what do we want to say, kind of calendar holders to make sure that you put that in as a date. But we can change any of these. We can say, hey, let's have a, a monthly 
um, work session, but we would keep these same dates, but some of them could change the work sessions. We don't necessarily need to identify all those now, um, but I do think that there is this idea that I've heard from several of you in talking individually to you, that some of these will probably change to work sessions. But right now, these are just calendar holders for us to be sure we have set them aside uh, dates that we will have meetings. So would everybody look at those dates? Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Yes, Mr. Uh, Frank. Keeping these dates here, can we add work sessions? Absolutely, yes. Uh, or I don't, know, you want, I don't know whether you want to call them a work session or a retreat, but some, somewhere where we can get together Saturday morning, coffee, donuts, make sure we're all on the same sheet of music. Yes, the answer to that is yes. The key to this is that we have to publicize it. Yes, I, I understand. And, and there's also, even though it might be a work session, there's still some things we have to do. It's still an official meeting. Okay. We might decide to lay aside, say, Robert's Rules of Order and say we're only going to have periods of time where each of us are going to talk about subjects. But um, we, there'll still be some things we have to do. Yeah, I'm just interested in being able to brainstorm some things. Excellent, yes. And so there's no problem scheduling other ones. What's good about having this is we know these will be there and all of us will make sure right. we're available during these dates. Uh, the other ones can sometimes, I would suggest, Mr. Frank, that when we have those ideas, I would say it would have to be at least, or at least my need, um, probably a month out. Um, it would be, especially if it's a weekend or a Saturday. Okay, I mean, we can set one tonight. Um, well, no, I'm not saying we have to do it tonight. I don't have my calendar here even for that. I have my calendar written down for these, but I don't okay. have all that. All right. Um, any other changes or suggestions to the calendar? Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, so originally we have February 5th on here because originally that was going to be a joint meeting between the Board of Supervisors and the school board. I understand that's unlikely to happen now. Um, so what we have right here is January 29th and then February 5th, that's back-to-back -back weeks of meetings. So I would suggest that since we're not doing the joint meeting on the 5th, that we just move that back to the normal meeting date of the 12th, the 2nd. Um, I guess that'd be Monday in February, so we don't have back-to-back -back from January 29th to February 5th. So your recommendation is to move the February 5th to February the 12th? Right, and then it would also be two weeks from the next meeting on February 26th as well. How does everybody else, else feel about that change? That sounds like a good a good move. Yeah, I like it. I like change. it too, Mr. Rolls. Uh, the reason why we kept that on there is simply because we've been talking about it right. as the possible date for the joint meeting. And so I know I've had already had it on my calendar. Um, but yeah, it's just a holding date. But you know what? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I'm going to have to look at my calendar for a second. Fine. All right. Any other recommendations for changes to the calendar besides that one? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, so in two years on the board, we've done it both ways where we either just always made our meetings on Mondays and then another year, this past year, we did, um, if it was the Monday was a federal holiday, we moved the meeting to Wednesday. And I, I got to tell you, I much prefer the latter to actually just have the day off with my family without having to do board prep for those days. So I think there's, I went and looked, I think there's just, Two instances on, on the calendar where you know Monday would be a conflict as a federal holiday. So that'd be so if we took the Monday and moved it to a Wednesday in those cases, that'd be taking October 14th, Columbus Day, and then pushing it back to the 16th. And then there's also a conflict on Veterans Day, November 11th. So I'd ask to move that one to November 13th. So the only consideration there is whether or not we'll have the river comb. But honestly, if if the board's okay with it, we can be here. Okay, so the recommendations, we move the October 14th to the 16th because it's a federal holiday and then November 11th to November 13th, both from a moving from a Monday to a Wednesday. Um, have any other thoughts or comments on that? And again, Dr. Boyd said there's a chance that the Rivercomb building might not be available, so we would probably meet here. Thoughts or comments on that? I didn't hear the second. October 16th, and what was the second date? The second one was November the 13th. I'm excuse me, November the 11th would change to November the 13th. That's Veterans Day. Yes. So 
from a Monday to a Wednesday. Okay, thank you. Any other thoughts on that? That's fine. I, I do have a, a thought about what's the procedure if we're not able to make a meeting. Um, canceling a meeting for various reasons, such as maybe illness among board members, uh, weather, as you know from last week, um, those are all normal. We need to get that out as soon as possible. If scheduling another meeting has to have three days, I believe. We have to have three days notice. Also, we can continue to conduct a meeting with a quorum with three individuals. That's true. Uh, and we also uh, have that policy that we looked at maybe a little over a year ago now where board members can attend virtually if need be. Yes, Dr. Board, I think you answered the question was, I'm talking about if, if, if I can't make a meeting, what's the procedure? Oh, okay. Um, generally speaking, if you can't make a meeting and it's like one, possibly even two a year, I mean, that's as long as there's a quorum, we would still go ahead. That has happened in the past. Sometimes, like Dr. Boyd said, if possible, especially if it's something we want to be sure all the board members are on board with, you know, having one person attend virtually, we've done that a couple of times over the last two years. So I'd say the answer is if you, if one of us need to be out, um, it's possible we can just say, we'll go ahead with just four of us, making sure four will be there. But that really depends on what we're going to be talking about that night too, because uh, there might be some very important topics that we need to have input from all five of us. In that case, we'd probably want you in virtually. Um, or possibly cancel the meeting. We try to avoid that, or at least change some of the agenda items so it wouldn't be that kind of thing. Well, I've got three dates right now that I won't be. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Can you let us know those now? Mr. Yeah, May the 6th, August the 5th, and October the 28th. I'm sorry, what was the last one? October the 28th. If we were to change those to Wednesday, would you be able to make them? I will be out of the country for oh, a all couple right. of okay. months. So even attending virtually would be difficult? Uh, August the 5th, yes. That one probably won't be able. The other, and May the 6th, I, that's virtually, yes, I can do that one. October the 28th, I could probably do that one. Okay. Uh, if there's any reception. Just August 5th. Yeah, why don't you look at the possibility of trying to do that, Mr. Frank, and then just missing that one October 5th, excuse me, August the 5th would probably be fine. We'll make sure okay. the agenda is as such that um, we can, and making sure that other four of us will be here. But see if you can possibly make that virtual work. Um, uh, John will help you with, with some of that, how to make that happen. So you might want to talk to him. Okay. Thank you. And you're, you're, you're welcome. Any other comments about the calendar? I thought we only had, um, in the summer months, we would have one meeting per month. It looks like the only month we do that is July this time. Am I missing it? No, I think oh. last year, didn't we cancel that like a month or two ahead of time? I don't think we did that with the calendar. I think... Um, Ms. Gonzalez maybe canceled one in uh, yeah. one year in June. We had two. I think we've had two. Um, it flips sometimes. Sometimes two in June, sometimes two in July, but one in the other month of the summer has been traditional. Okay. Ms. Hoover, why don't we do this? Um, if we come to like, say, May, sometime in May or in the middle of May, we see that we probably only need to have one of those in June, then we can make that change then as long as we give enough notice. Okay. Um, let's see kind of where the budget is. I'm a little leery to just cancel one of them now because of the budget situation, because the governor last year, if you remember, I'm not trying to put the governor in a bad place, but um, sometimes him and also the legislature is a little bit late and that may affect some decisions that we may need to make. Okay. Anybody else have a comment about that? Okay, uh, I need a, a motion to uh, approve this calendar uh, with the uh, amended changes. Uh, Mr. Bush, I got will yes, just say one thing. Oh, um, I'll expand on it later when we do our report out for our conferences, VSP and SBMA, but the um, basic idea is that a suggestion that I heard at the SBMA conference that I think is a very good one is to lay out the calendar in more detail throughout the year as far as things that are going to happen, different parts, points. Um, 
I'll go more detail later, but I think for now, uh, it's the first step just to set out these dates is good, but then I'll go talk about that more at the appropriate part of the next meeting. And of some major items we want to like budget will be decided at this date or things like that. I guess, for instance, one thing that's in policy now that we have hard I mean, dates that we can actually put on the calendar is the schedule we laid out for it in the superintendent evaluation every year. I that see. should be on calendars. So we just can see it. That's there a good it point. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. yeah begin super or begin surveys for superintendent evaluation and then discussion or whatever. Yeah, that's we can do that. Dr. Boyd, if you would uh, kind of look and make some suggestions in the next couple of months about that. Okay. Thank you. That's an excellent idea. Any other thoughts about that? All right, do I have a motion then to uh, approve the amended calendar? I will make a motion that we approve the amended calendar. Second? Second. Any discussion? Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Calendar is approved. Thank you. All right, next on the agenda. is the um, appointment of the clerk and deputy clerk. Um, and if you'll notice, that's a little bit of a change here. The clerk is going to be Mrs. Cheryl Bushbrod and the deputy clerk will be Dr. Jesse Boyd. And we do need to vote on these. Um, and so basically, if you'd make a note of that in your agenda here, that is Dr. Um, excuse me, Ms. Cheryl Bushrod is the clerk and the deputy clerk is Dr. Jesse Boyd. Is that correct? That Dr. is Boyd? correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, do I have a motion or would you want to discuss some of this ahead of time? A motion for the clerk and the deputy clerk. Again, the clerk being Ms. Bushrod and the deputy Dr. Boyd. I make a motion to appoint Ms. Cheryl Bushrod as clerk and Dr. Jesse Boyd as deputy clerk. Do I have a second? I think they need separate, don't they? Don't have to be separate motions, different. People. They need to be separate motions, Dr. Boyd. Yeah, maybe. All right, it's fine. We can do. All right, let's do them separate. Uh, Ms. Hoover, would you mind amending your motion? I make a motion to approve Ms. Cheryl Bushrod as clerk. Second for that. Second. All those in favor? Uh, a little bit of discussion, Mr. Oh, Mr. I'm sorry. Discussion about Ms. Bushrod being the clerk. I uh, just attending some SBME. This is a conference, maybe also it's an email. I think to make a good point that I had wondered when I first got on the board, why are we electing these people separately when we've always been told by VSBA that our one employee is the superintendent? And I think you know, there's, there's that separation for a reason. I think just like you have separation of you know, power for like executive, legislator, legislation, and uh, judicial, I mean, it's good to have the idea would be to have all these functions performed by someone different, you should have a different person for a superintendent, a different person for a clerk, and a different person for assistant to the superintendent. Although I do understand, especially for much smaller or uh, divisions, I should say, that that might be not be real practical. Um, so, so I'm not just saying I'm against it, but I just not the ideal. So if I do vote for it, it's more thinking of it as a temporary arrangement rather than the long-term ideal. But I do have a question just Mr. for Dr. Boyd about this. I know at one point we thought we had a, a clerk chosen to replace Mrs. Rinko. And is it, what's, what has been the real challenge there? Is it that we just aren't willing to pay enough to get somebody? It's, it's a position that um, requires much more effort than we have traditionally compensated for. It's, it's a stipend. Uh, and Similar to many stipends, it's it's if you broke it down by the hour, it's it's pennies on the hour. So it's it's really a full time job. I can tell you, I can tell you traditionally for many 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 years in King George County, Ms. Bushrod has served as the clerk or the deputy clerk, um, and and the superintendent has served as the deputy cl clerk in the past. Uh, I, I hear your point, and I I agree with you as far as it being a separation of duties, but it is very much an economy of scale. You know, in a smaller school division, you are working with a limited or finite amount of resources. So that's that's really the main impetus. That's something I want to continue to understand better, but I'm fine with this for now. I just wanted to say that. All right, well, thank you. Let's, let's go ahead and vote on the first one first, and then we'll vote on the second. So right now we've had a motion to appoint um, the clerk 
to be Michelle Bushrod and it has been seconded. Any more discussion? All right, so we're only voting for that one position. So all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Ms. Bushrod is the clerk. Now the deputy clerk, do I have a motion um, to uh, appoint Dr. Jesse Boyd as the deputy clerk? I motion to appoint Dr. Jesse Boyd as deputy clerk. I second. All right, now further discussion. I think we've already had some discussion. Mr. Rolls, did you want to say any more? No further discussion. Anybody else want to add to Mr. Rolls discussion about this deputy position? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Dr. Jesse Boyd is the deputy clerk. And I, I do appreciate your comment, Mr. Rolls, and you're absolutely right. It is kind of an economy of scale, I think, in considering our size and the position, but it is something we might look at in the future and consider making a, a change. All right, the appointment of agent and the deputy agent. It has been recommended that the agent be Mrs. Cheryl Williams as the agent. Sherry. Cher oh, I'm sorry, Sherry Williams. Thank you for the correction, Ms. Davis. Sherry Williams as the agent. Um, do I have a, uh, a motion? I move that we appoint Mrs. Sherry Williams as the fiscal agent. Second, somebody? I second. Thank you, Ms. Hoover. Any discussion about Ms. Sh Sherry Williams? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Ms. Sherry Williams is the agent. Now again, the deputy agent, and uh, it's rare in both of these cases, both the clerk and the agent that uh, they'd be used, but right now, similar discussion. Uh, Dr. Boyd has been suggested to be appointed as the deputy agent. Do I have a motion? I move that we appoint Dr. Jesse Boyd as the deputy fiscal agent. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Probably, I assume, a similar discussion, Mr. Rolls, with that one, as the other one? I don't know as much about this one, so. Okay, <laughs> all right. All right, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. So we have um, Dr. Jesse Boyd as the deputy agent. All right, now the last one, item 12, the authorization of a superintendent designee. It has been recommended that Dr. Troy Wright be that designee, is that correct, Dr. Wright? All right, do I have a motion where this is Dr. Troy Wright as being the uh, a superintendent designee if he can't be here for a meeting. I move that we authorize Dr. Troy Wright as the superintendent's designee. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Dr. Troy Wright is the superintendent designee. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I make Are a we... motion to adjourn. Oh, wait, did you? Do you have a comment before? Okay. Sorry, Ms. Hoover, go ahead. Let's make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Chair votes aye. We are adjourned and we will have a five minute break and then we will meet with a regular meeting at 6.40. <laughs> <laughs> we are adjourned.